Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. My name is Mao, and this is my co-presenter, Emmy. As you just saw, my topic, our topic is Japanese ancient warriors, ninja, and samurai. Tonight, my Mao will talk about shadow warrior, ninja. I will talk about Japanese friends of justice, samurai. Now, let's begin with Mao. Do you know about ninja? <laughs> ninja is getting popular around the world because of Japanese animation or comic. However, ninja who actually existed is a little bit different what people imagine. I have three topics. I have sub three subtopics. First is ninja's job. Second is female ninjas. The last one is interesting facts about ninja. Now, let's begin with ninja's job. How did ninja get a job? <laughs> Their job was not stable, so they were hired by military commander, and then after after their duty was completed, they got money from their military commander. Ninja mostly work as a spy. They snuck into the enemy's territory and or, or their castles to get information about political situations, military power, and climate. The information was really helpful for ninjas to set a trap for attacking the enemy's weak points or to avoid fighting with them. How did ninja get the information from enemies? Actually, ninja controlled people psychologically very well. People basically have five emotions, happiness, anger, sadness, amusement, and fear. Ninja found out which emotion would be effective for their enemies by talking with them. Do you think ninja wore dark clothes all the time? <laughs> the answer is no, because if they wore dark clothes during the day, it would be very obvious. So, <coughs> so they were captured by their enemies very easily. So ninja disguised like many kinds of jobs, such as monks, hokashi, which means street performer in English, and merchant, because it was more easy and safe to bring the information back to their territory or leaders. Next, And also, it was easier for ninja to get information about enemies from people, because nobody suspected that they would be ninja in these clothes. Next is about special tools for ninja's job. First is shuriken. In fact, ninja couldn't ki kill people with these tools. However, if they put poison on them, it was possible to give their enemies battery injury. Besides it, as you can see, it's very small, and it doesn't make any sound when ninja throw them away. So <coughs> it, was, it is very useful tools for assassination or protection. By the way, uh, I couldn't pass the security because of this shuriken. <laughs> Next is makibishi. They were made of water chestnuts. As you can see, they have many thorns. So, if, so after ninja throw them away on the ground, when their enemies step on them, they got hurt on their feet. So ninja, so they couldn't chase ninja anymore. So ninja used these tools to to gain time to escape from enemies. Now let's move on to female ninja. Many girls also worked as a spy. They were called aruki miko, which means walking maiden. They learned about prayers, self-defense and how to seduce men to inf get information from them. They wore white clothes and red long white pants. However, this cloth is usually used by Miko. Miko are girls who work at shrine and they are very holy women. 
So, if girls disguised like Nico, nobody suspected they would be spies, so it was easy for them to gather information from people. What kind of tools, with what kind of weapon did female ninja use? As I used before the presentation, female ninja used this tool, uh, this one, uh, as a weapon. This is called Kazashi, which is Japanese Japanese traditional head accessory for yukata or kimono. The kanzashi was usually made of wood at that time. However, the kanzashi the female ninja used was made of metal instead of wood. Besides it, it had more it had sharper point than usual. So if if the girls were found they, they were ninja by their enemies. Uh, they use these tools to hit the enemy's vital points. So even, even though it doesn't look like it wouldn't hurt anyone, it was possible to give the, if their enemies injury. So this tool was the perfect hidden tool for female ninjas. Finally, I'd like to talk about interesting facts about ninja. Ninja were experts in healthy food because it was important for them to keep their body healthy and strong. And also, they had to keep their weight around 120 pounds. However, this weight is a little bit lighter than the average weight of Japanese men. But as I mentioned, uh, Ninja worked as a spy, so they had to move quickly so this weight was the just right size for ninja. Ninja used to eat soybeans as a staple food. As Japanese people call soybeans meat of the field, soybeans have a lot of vegetable proteins, so they made the ninja's body healthy and their, their muscles strong. Ninja ate soybeans, as soybeans in many ways, such as tofu and miso, which is Japanese seasoning. Why did the ninja disappear? The main reason is the end of the war at Edo period, which is about 400 years ago. As I said, ninja worked as a spy, so after the war, many ninja lost their job. However, after the war, they changed their job into many kinds of jobs. I have some examples. Some ninjas were experts in making gunpowder. So they changed their job into pyrotechnists. And they, oh, some ninjas were good at making medicine, so they started to work as a pharmacist after the war. Another ninja started to work as a police or a secret agent. Even though the name is different, um, <coughs> The, this, this job, this job it was uh, pretty similar to ninja's job. Ninja spirit is also similar to ninja spirit is also connected to ja today's Japanese characteristics. We like ninja in this kanji. Ninja has two meanings. First one is sneaky person. The other one is enduring person. For example, ninja took long time to gather information about enemies because they had to tell their general about correct information. In addition, if ninjas were captured by their enemies, after that, of course, ninja were tortured by them. However, they would never tell their enemies about the information of leaders about their leaders. Like this, this situation, ninja had a spirit that they had to endure any difficulty. So Japanese people still take over their spirit today. In conclusion, ninja worked as a spy, and, and women also worked as a women also worked as a ninja. After the war, they changed their job into many kinds of jobs after the war. And then, Japanese people still have a spirit of ninja. 
Even though the information that I talked is a little bit different from what people imagine, Ninja is still fascinating for people, and we are proud of, ja we are proud of Ninja as the one of the wonderful Japanese cultures. Thank you for listening. Next, Emi is going to talk about samurai. I ask this question to all of my friends. Do you know why Japanese people Thank you, Mao. Go to summer festival? Good evening. My name is Emi. My topic nobody, is nobody Friends of Justice. Ah, Friends of Justice Samurai. Have you ever seen samurai before? Maybe not. <laughs> In Japan, there is no samurai now. But in the past, there were a lot of samurai. So I have three topics, three subtopics about samurai. I will, I will talk about samurai's job, samurai's life, and famous samurai. So let's move on to samurai's job. What is samurai's job? When people think about samurai's job, they imagine kill people the way to way of the protect of a lord, but actually it was not. They they worked mainly escort in castle. It was boring. <laughs> and then sometimes they had battles to protect the lord because they were government employee. How long did they work? Now, Japanese people usually work from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So they have to work at least eight hours. It's too long. In the past, samurai was worked from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So they worked only three hours. It's much shorter than now, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes, unfortunately, enemies came to the castle to kill a lord. So, samurai's job was also protect the lord and castle. Those were weapons. This is sword, this is arrow, and this is shield. They used shield, but it was unuseful because it was too tall and too big. No, too tall and too heavy. Let's move on to summarize life. I will talk about spirit, their spirit, and clothes, and footwear. Samurai had own spirit, we call it bushido, it means they had the spirit of self-sacrifice, so they worked for people. They ashamed to be a coward, so they have to keep their mind, be, up, be brave. Also, this spirit became bitter. The samurai's, samurai's usual wardrobe was the kimono, the kimono has some, some types for according to season. For example, in spring and summer, they wore yukata, which, kind, which is very thin. But in fall and winter, they wore kimono, which is very thick. Also, they wore tabi, which, which are kind of so socks. The part of toe is separated because they were geta, which are kind of sandal. This sandal made of pine or Japanese cedar. Finally, let's move on to five famous samurai. I will explain about foreign samurai, female samurai, and foreign samurai. Can you imagine about female samurai? There were some female samurai in Japan. The most famous female samurai was Koto Nakazawa. She was really good at kendo, so she was very strong. So she couldn't 
tell the people that she was a woman because women couldn't be a samurai. So she had to pretend to be a man. Also, her height was very tall, like five feet six. So there was no room to doubt about it. My topic is Ryokan's aesthetic value. In her lifetime, a lot of women My subtopics were interested in her because she was a good-looking man. <laughs> <laughs> she took part in Roshigumi, which, which group made for general's bodyguards. Goes back to the Next, foreign samurai. There was foreign samurai in, in Japan. Japan. His name was Yasuke. Yasuke Yasuke's nationality was African because his, he was born in Mozambique, but an Italian missionary brought him from, Italian, no, from India to Japan. When the, when the Lord Nobunaga Oda saw him, he said, Oh, you are covered in suit. Oh, poor you. You should take a bath. But his skin was still dark. So he was really surprised about it. He said, I've never seen like you. Amazing. Please, please, please join us. So he helped, Nobunaga helped Yasuke to be a samurai. So Nobunaga named Yasuke. Kuroitsuchi no Tami, which means the cause of fire wood, the people of dark earth. In the Edo period, so he became very famous. So a lot of visitors yeah. came to Kyoto yeah. to see uh, him. Many people, <laughs> a, lo a lot of people got serious, seriously injured. It was problem. In conclusion, in the Edo period, Samurai's life is very interesting, such as Samurai had own spirit, as I said, Bushido, and also people believed it. Samurai was really cool and always killing people, but it was not. They had sometimes desk work because in Kyoto castle, Lord and sometimes they had a battle. The there were a lot of samurai, such as female samurai and foreign samurai, but the, the each samurai didn't have the same background. So, for place to stay also changed. In our, in our group conclusion, the difference between ninja and samurai is ninja's job was a part-time job, and also, they, they worked as a spy secretly. On the other hand, samurai, wor samurai worked Sorry. as a government employee, so they worked at castle in public. The similarity between samurai and ninja, they had the spirit of loyalty, Quality. and so they worked for a leader. Also, ninja and samurai don't exist anymore, from but Japanese from people Naraku. still have Just their home. spirit. I hope you enjoyed um, our in pre years. presentation. Thank, Thank you, you for listening. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? So your question is, what is a kendo? Uh, kendo is Japanese swordmanship. So they practice every day. Any other question? Thank you for listening.